Hello and welcome to the first project for our digital portfolio class. In this project, we're going to be working over the next two weeks on an interactive report. And I'm going to break this up into two different parts. Now for this interactive report, I'm going to give you a set of data that we're going to create a variety of different charts and graphs for. We're then going to take all of those graphs and put them into Adobe InDesign and make a report that you can click on and jump to different pages to bring up your information. You can go onto our Moodle page right now and download the project information. And also there's a folder that has the data for the project resources to work on. Now, if you haven't found it already, you can see the video on how to make these different data charts. That's what this video is going to be about. Next week, we're going to talk about how to make the interactive part of this, this uh, project. So it's two different parts. This first week, we're only going to focus on making the different data charts. And we're going to do all of that in Adobe Illustrator. Before we jump into that, let's look, have a look at the data visualization resources that I'm giving to you. If you download the folder, here's what, I'm, what it looks like. This is going to be just raw data that I'm giving to you. Now, this report is going to be on university housing fires. Uh, this data comes directly from what I've found online, and it's a variety of just different raw sets of numbers and factual information. It's very boring and very plain. So what we want to do is we want to dress this up so that it looks more visually appealing so that people will actually be able to quickly understand it. So I'm giving you some simple text files and also some fire prevention tips. But this week, we're going to focus on these spreadsheets that I'm giving you. Inside of each of these spreadsheets, I'm giving it to you as an Excel spreadsheet, are all of the numbers that we want to turn into a variety of different charts. Now, if you open them up, you can easily open them in Microsoft Excel. And you can see here, this is where we can get our information. But if you don't have access to Excel or any other spreadsheet um, software on your computer, you should be able to open them up in Google Drive as a Google spreadsheet and be able to pull the information from there as well. And Google Drive is available as part of your MC email uh, suite, of, suite of software. The other thing to pay attention to is the name that I'm giving to you for each one of these different data sets. Inside of the name, at the very end in parenthesis, will tell you the type of chart I want you to create. Adobe Illustrator can make a variety of different charts. And so this is the one I'm indicating uh, that you should create for this data set. I'm going to give you some examples of what we'll create. These were done by students in the past. And you can see that we can do pie charts, column charts or bar charts, and also line graphs. Now, these that I'm showing you are very plain and very simple. They're the basic what I'm looking for for this project. Don't think that yours have to look exactly like this. Instead, I really want to see your creativity and how you would focus and tackle each one of these particular designs. In this video, all I'm going to do is to show you how to set it up. The rest of the time, I'm going to leave it up to you for how you'd actually design it. The better it looks, the better your grade will be for this overall report. So let's jump in and start creating some different graphs. We're going to be using Adobe Illustrator. So I'll launch it. And we're just going to set everything to be on its own uh, individual page. So every graph that we create is going to be a different document. The size of my document is a simple letter size. Later on, we'll change it up to uh, fit the size of the document that we need. All right, with this done, let me introduce you to the different tools that we have. First off, if you go over to your toolbox, down towards the bottom are a variety of different graph tools. And if you click on them, you can see they're all nested together. Illustrator can make uh, column, bar graphs, lines, areas, scatter plots, pie charts, bunches of different kinds of data it can handle. Some of these I use more often than others, and we don't have to use all of these for this project. But when you select in any one of these tools, this will open up and allow you to create your graph from your data set. Let's do the first one, which will be a pie graph. So I'm going to choose my pie graph tool. 
With it selected, I can go over to my document and just click once. Now this is going to ask you what size do you want to make your graph. Later on we can change it up, but for now I'm simply going to type in 8 inches by 8 inches. We'll keep it nice and square. You can see it's converting to points, which is okay. When I say okay, so create my little graph obviously off to the side, and it's going to open up a little spreadsheet. This is where we can go in and type in our data to start building out our pie graph. Illustrator will do all the work for us. Let's go back and get our data. So I'm going to jump back into my pie graph data chart. The only thing that I need to copy over is going to be the information that's inside of the little brackets at the bottom. We don't need the title. We don't need the paragraph of information. I'm simply going to focus on this right here. So with it highlighted and selected, I'll go up to Edit and Copy. Let's jump back into Illustrator. And inside of our spreadsheet area, we'll go up to Edit and Paste. And this will paste the information into here. And if you need to, you can make it larger so you can see it. Now, notice that all of the information that's placed in here, it can deal with uh, alphanumeric. In other words, it's got letters to it or just numeric data, numbers that are placed in here. But it didn't change my graph when I placed the information in my spreadsheet. In order to lock in this information, once you've got it pasted in, look for the checkbox at the top right-hand corner. When you click Apply, this will start to build out your graph. Now, I've got a problem here. Obviously, it's made a variety of different pie charts, but I want one big chart that places the information appropriately in here. And you can see it's done it incorrectly. Now, if this happens to you, here's how to fix it. What's happened is I've put information in a column that should have been in a row. So we want to transpose it. Look for the transpose row icon at the top right hand side. This will swap everything over from rows to columns. Now when we click the checkbox, this will automatically place everything inside of one pie chart and we get a little ledger off to the side. So this is exactly what we want. Once you get your data set up correctly, we can close it out. And I'm going to use my move tool. And let's move it back on to the area that I can work with. Now these graphs, they're kind of, kind of a different little object that you may not be normally used to in Adobe Illustrator. First off, I can move it around with my black arrow selection tool, but if you ever want to scale it or change the size of it, we can't use the move tool. We got to use the simple scale tool. With that, I'm going to hold down shift as I click and drag. Let's make it a little bit smaller so that it fits inside of my work area. That looks good. You can also see that the data is off to the side and my pie chart is completely clean. Let me show you the other bit of where you can find how to customize your charts. If you go up to Object, look towards the very bottom to find the word Graph. Now the first thing you'll want to know is the type of graph that you have. If for some reason you've selected the wrong kind of graph, here's where you can quickly and easily change it over to a different style of graph. Down towards the bottom, what I like to look at are some of the options. For instance, if I don't want my legend to be on the side or if I want it to be in a different place, I can either turn it off. And if I say OK, it'll completely go away. Or let's bring my graph back up under type. If I wanted my legend to be inside of the wedges, I can say OK to this. You can see it'll automatically place my information inside of here. And I kind of like that. Let's go back to my scale tool and we'll scale it back up so I can see work with it as well. Oops, just make sure, hold down shift, and go off to the side here. The next thing you'll want to do is to be able to change the color inside of each one of these. By default, all of the graphs you're going to make are going to be in shades of gray, black, white, and everything in between. By adding color to this, it'll make it a little bit easier to read, and it'll also, of course, make it much more visually appealing. So to select the individual wedges, you can't use your black arrow tool. That's because all of this is grouped together as one individual slice. 
Instead, I'm gonna use my direct selection tool. This is the white arrow. This will allow you to click on an individual piece and be able to make changes to it. So if I selected this, I can go over to my swatches and I can change it to be whatever color I want it to be from here. Here's a great tip, I'll close this out. Instead of using the default swatches, let's start building our graphs based on a, a uh, defined color palette. I'm gonna go down to my little swatches library and it can be any one of these color palettes that are on here. Some of these are actually more fun than others. I like working with the gradients. I'm gonna bring up these bright colors and that's what I had before. So now with my white arrow, I can click on each wedge and I can go through and I can change it over to be a nice little gradient. So let's do something different so that it stands out for each one. So there's green, yellow, orange, and what do you say? Make that red, let's make it a darker red. Whatever fits the needs for your overall design. Ah, let's see, I kind of like, let's make that one blue and let's make that one red so I can see the difference between the two. You can also see they all have a black outline and at this time, if you wanted, you could select all of them and get rid of the black outline that's around those. I'm gonna, eh, maybe I'll keep it. Now, one thing that these graphs will not do is to put the numbers back on here. You can see it's given the, uh, the identifiers, the actual legend of what each one means, but I don't have the number data that should go along with it. In this case, this is where I'm gonna grab my type tool and I simply need to type in the information back into these different areas. So let me scoot this back over, let's get this out of the way. And I'm gonna go through and manually type this in. So for undetermined, maybe I'll put this on a different line. We'll do 16. These are in percentages. For other, this was 18%. For smoking, that was the largest one at 29%. Intentional fires were 16%. Electrical. And then finally, cooking fires were 9%. And while I've got it, I can highlight these and I can change the appearance of whatever font that I need to from it as well. Hey, if I wanna do all of those quickly, use your black or white arrow direct selection tool and hold down shift. And you can select all of the text. And with all of the text selected, let's go over and change the formatting of those as well. Maybe make them larger. You can even change the color of it. Let's make it like that. Now it's starting to look much, much better. With each one of these, so that's our basic pie graph that we have. Beyond this, we can go in and we can start to tweak the look and feel of each one of these graphs and make it even more interesting. For instance, a lot of my students like to turn this instead of a pie graph into more of a donut style graph where they cut out the middle of it. If this is the case, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna ungroup everything that I have, go up to object and ungroup. Now, when you ungroup anything from a graph, this is gonna take all the data and break it apart from the, the data set that we have. This means you won't be able to make changes to this the way you could uh, if you wanted to update the data. So just know, ungrouping it changes your data set, but it's okay for what we're doing because we everything is correct. With everything ungrouped, you may have to do it a couple of times. So I'll ungroup it again. This will let you select individual slices and you can actually move them out and break them away. What I wanna do is I'm gonna choose my ellipse tool. I'm gonna to draw a simple little circle in the middle of this. There's that. The color won't matter for what we're doing for now. Then I'm gonna highlight everything and let's use our shape builder tool. When I hold down the option key, this will let me click and drag on the inside of this and erase away everything inside of here. I can then readjust all of my text to be nice and centered inside of this as well. So you can easily take an existing shape or part and you can break it apart and you can make it a more interesting style of graph than what Illustrator gives you as default.
but that's how to build out the pie chart. When you are finished with each one of these graphs, make sure to save it as a individual Illustrator document. So I'll go up to File and do Save. I'm gonna save all of mine on my computer. This will be our pie chart. And this particular pie chart was for causes of fatal campus fires. So make sure to add that to there. Causes of fatal because I'm going to be making a variety of different charts. I want to make sure I got that on there. I'm going to close it out. Let's make a new one. For this next chart, this was going to be a column chart. <clears throat> Actually, let's go back. I'm going to do the bar chart next. Y'all save the column chart for last, and you'll see why in just a second. So this will be a bar chart. Again, pay attention to the name. And I'm going to select all of my data. I'm going to copy it, edit and copy. Let's jump back into Illustrator and let's locate the bar graph tool. One click and again, we can make it eight inches by eight inches. And we'll get our little data set. From here, I can paste everything in. Now, when I click the checkbox, automatically it gives me everything and it actually reads really well. So I don't have to do any kind of transposition. As a matter of fact, if I do that, it's going to give me kind of a weird graph. So it's not, it's not transpose what we have. The data will come in just nicely. And I've got my times over here on the left side and I've got my number of fires along the bottom edge. And we'll close it out. Now for this, what I wanna see is being able to get two different data sets, the two different times that are here, and I need to fix and make the times a little bit more readable. So I'm gonna use my direct selection tool and let's choose the click and drag over all of this text set that's on the side. So simply click and drag. Maybe I'll make the text a little bit smaller. That reads well, really good. Also, I want to be able to see when each of these happen. Now you can see there's the number that goes down here, but the ticks are really, really small. So I'm going to select my data set. <clears throat> Let's go up to object, down to graph, and open up the type one more time. I want to be able to see some lines that go all the way to the top. So at the very top, under graph options, you've got a value and a category axis. Now for the value axis, you can see here's our tick marks and they're set to be short. If I was set these to be full width, let's see what happens. This will give us a line that goes all the way across. And so this is our value axis. And now I can quickly and easily read how many different alarms went off for each one. As we did with the others, let's go ahead and recolor each one of these. And uh, let's also turn on our, yeah, we'll, we'll, keep the, we'll keep everything else the same. It didn't have a legend to go along with it. <clears throat> now, in order to quickly select everything that's a black bar, I'm not gonna use my direct selection tool. I'm gonna use my group selection tool. With group selection, it's got a little plus sign to it. You can click once and select, in this case, the black bar. But if I click again, it's gonna select all of the black bars. In other words, all of the ones that have the same grouping as it does. Now, if I want to be able to change the color of it, I can go into my little color bars, select them. They're all changed at once. Let's do the same for the lighter colors. So select once, to select the lighter bar, and then click again, and that'll get all of them. And I'm gonna set this one to be blue. Now I can quickly and easily read this kind of data. Next, let's clean this up and make it a little bit more visible. So again, I'll select it. I'm gonna scale it down, choose my scale tool. Do make sure to hold down the shift key. <clears throat> and we'll place it inside of here. One thing we can do is to change the background of the area we're looking at. I always like to put mine on some sort of nice contrasting area that makes it much easier to see. So to do this, maybe I'll choose my rounded rectangle tool. I'll set it inside of a bordered area and we'll send that to the back. And we'll make this really, really muted. I kind of like a gray 
type background. Gray makes those colors pop out, but obviously I can't see my black area too much. So I'm going to lock this down. Again, I'm going to select just my text by using my direct selection tool, the white arrow. Let's change that over to be white as its color. Do the same for the numbers at the bottom. It's looking good. And we'll do the same for each of the lines. Now it's going to be difficult selecting each one of these lines. So I'm going to carefully click and drag over or just hold down my shift key and click on each one of these as well. Click, click, click. You may have to zoom in, hold down shift till each little line is selected. There's that. Now with all my black lines selected, I can go over to my stroke, I can set it to be, let's do a lighter gray. Hey, the best part about this is I can also open my stroke panel and we can make it instead of a solid line, let's make it a little bit thinner and maybe make it a dash line. Eh, let's make it a little thinner dashes. If I open up dash, we'll set them to be maybe one or two points in size. So that looks good for that one too. Much, much better. Now my graph is easily readable and it looks good. I could even go back into my pie chart that I created earlier and make it um, fit this same style that we have. Once I've got this saved, so that's a bar graph. Everything looks good. I've got two different color bars. We can go up to file. Do make sure to save this. And in this case, the name of the graph was fatal fires when they occur, when fatal fires occur. Bar graph, when fatal fires occur. We'll save that up as well. Close out that data, we'll come back to the other. I wanna open up my line graph next, and this will be the total campus fires. Again, we don't have to have all the data, but I'm gonna select everything down here. In this case, I'm also gonna select the word years and number of fires. We'll go up to edit and copy. Let's jump into Illustrator and make a new document. We don't need the old one. And I wanna emphasize, make a new document. Please do not do these in different layers. They all have to be in a different document itself. Since this is a line graph, I'm going to choose the line graph tool. We'll click once, create a new one. And again, eight inches by eight inches is what we need. <clears throat> and we'll paste our data into here and hit the checkbox. It needs to be a number on there. Aha, I actually added the year and the number at the top. Now let's hit check. Uh oh, there's been a problem. Aha. I know exactly what the problem is for this. So notice that I've got numbers inside of all of these, but it's giving me an error. It's saying, hey, there needs to be at least one number in the graph. Well, it's recognizing the little comma that's inside of each one of these data sets. So what we need to do is to go in and erase away the comma. And now you can see it turns into a solid number. So Illustrator is kind of persnickety about how they want each of these data sets to be uh -oh, 2,200. So I'm just going to go through real quickly and select and erase away the comma in each of these data sets. Won't take but a second to do. And if you ever get a data set that has comma values already in it, that's how you change this one. Now watch what happens when I hit the checkbox. Perfect. I'll even type in the word year at the top. Oops, excuse me, not yes, Y-E-A-R. And number, and this will add that to our ledger as well. All right, we're done with our data set. You can see there's our little ledger at the side and here's our years down at the very bottom of our graph. We'll click on it, let's drag it back in so I can see what we're working with. <clears throat> Again, this doesn't show me the numbers for each of the individual points, but it does give me a nice little graph down here at the, uh, the bottom that graphs out each of my data sets. Now, it 
by default, it's going to choose the number of values that it goes between. In this case, 2,500 to 1,500. And if I look at my data set, that's a good round number that it goes through. But let's say I wanted it to start not at 1,500, but 1,800 and go all the way up to 2,500. Another thing you can do with your data is if you go back up to Object, down to Graph, and choose Type, is change the values along each of the axes. So under Graph Options, go to Value Axis, we can override the calculated graph values. And you can see now it's going from 1500 at the lowest to 2500 at the very top. And it's got two divisions. So in other words, it's divided into two areas. Let's set this to be 1800 to 2500. Now, if I say OK to this, you can see it redoes the value of the graph. Let's go all the way back up to here one more time. Edit, excuse me, object, graph, and type. And we'll go back to our value axis. The number of divisions, let's give it some more divisions so that we can see everything that's between this. So 18 to 25 is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's seven different divisions. Let's see if I type in seven, if that'll give me the correct number. Now I've got it dividing off by every 100. And I can see the values that go along with this. So sometimes you need to be able to change this up in order to view it. In addition to this, I've got lines going vertically. Let's give some lines going horizontally as well. One last time, we'll go back up to our graph type. We'll choose our value axis. And let's change our tick marks from being short to being the full width across there as well. So now I've got a nice little graph that goes along and fits well with, with what we've got. We can scale everything down if we need to. We can even get rid of our little legend on the side. I think I want to get rid of my legend too. Again, I'll go to my graph options. And this is where we'll take it from the left side. Excuse me, the legend uh, is it not on there. Perhaps I, it's not on there as well. That's okay for what we've got. We'll just say, okay, we'll erase it automatically. But I do need to add my numbers back to the area. So this is where I'll drag it off to the side, grab my type tool. And I'm simply going to type in a default number for now. 19, excuse me, whoops, one comma, 1932. I'll make it a little bit larger. And I want to be able to make it just large enough so I can see it, but not so large that it takes up all of the different data that I have. So maybe about this size. I'll make a couple of copies of these and then later on I'll go back and I'll change out the data. Just know this is your design. You can design it however you want. But I won't take up your time showing me typing in the different data sets that we have. We'll set that there and finally one up here. Now all I have to do is to go back in and type in the data for each one. So for the second one, it'll be 18, oops, A1 comma, 18, 18, third one, 20, 2 comma, 6, so on and so forth. Let's select everything and add some color and design to this as well. So I'm going to select all of this, grab my scale tool. Let's scale it down. Grab my direct selection tool. I'm going to get rid of my little legend off to the side. We'll say OK to anything that comes up. Oops. Actually, we'll need to ungroup everything. Select it. Let's ungroup it. Object, <clears throat> ungroup. Now we'll say yes. This will let me get rid of any parts that I don't want to be on there as well. Let's add a background to it. In this case, maybe I'll make it a little bit brighter than I did for my previous ones. Let's go for bright red, send it to the back. That's looking good. Choose my direct selection tool. If I want to change up my text on the side, I'll select all of those. And we can keep it nice and consistent with all of our other text. I set it to be bold. I set it to be white as my color. Looking at the 
years down here at the very bottom. Obviously, those could be a little bit larger. And if I wanted to, I could stagger every other one just to make it a little bit more readable for each of the different years. If you get them too big, they're going to start running together. That's not what we want. We want to be able to see those. So I'm going to take those and make those a little bit larger, make them bold. That looks good. And of course, we'll change the color of those too. I can change the color of my line that I have with it selected. You can see it's broken into different segments, but if I hold down shift, I can select each one of those segments and then change up the type of line that that's done with too. And we'll make it a little bit bigger. Each of these line segments has a little marker. With my group selection tool, I can click once, click twice and select all of the markers and that looks really good. And all of those have a black outline. Let's give them a bright blue outline. And we'll fill it in with this way too. Ooh, let's round off the corners. <clears throat> Whatever fits best for yours. Finally, I can go through and get all of my lines that I have for each one of these. With the group selection tool, I can simply double click on that and get all of my lines going across. We'll set their stroke to be real thin. We'll set it to be that dash line that we have. And I think a white would look good for the background. That looks good. And then again, select all of our horizontal lines and set those colors to be, oops, excuse me, stroke color to be white. And also a dash line too. Had the wrong one selected. There's that, set it to be white. Open my stroke panel, set it to be a dash line and a little bit thinner. So I can read each one of those. Take your time, work on one bit as it comes. You can see I've even got something down here. We'll get rid of that line, that looks good. But make your graph much more pleasing, much more interesting to see. Maybe I'll go back in and spend a little bit more time making my numbers pop out because I want those to be nice and readable <clears throat> inside of that area. Save up this graph and that will be the one that you have. Now the last graph that we have, I won't save this one, is going to be a custom column graph. In order to create this, let's open up the data set for it. Give me just a second. Here it is. Jim. Ah, there it is. Yeah. In order to create this, we're going to create another column or bar graph, but we're going to turn it into a special kind of column. So I'm going to open up Illustrator, make one more document. And let's find our column graph tool. I'm going to click once. Again, make it eight inches by eight inches. And let's copy over the data. So I'll select it, edit and copy. Jump back into Illustrator and we'll paste it inside of the spreadsheet. And we'll hit check for this. Now you can see when I created this one, uh-oh, my graphs are all the way down here at the bottom and it's not showing me everything that I need. What's going on here? Well, here's what happened. When I created this column graph, it remembered the settings for my previous graph that I created. So I need to go back and I need to change those settings again. So with my graph still selected, if this is happening to you, if it's completely messing up, we'll go up to object, down to graph, and let's open the type. Let's reset everything back to where it should be. In other words, let's go to our value axis and uncheck override calculated values. We'll say okay. This will automatically do everything to the values that where it needs to be. 
If you want, you can also turn on and off the little line marks that are on here as well. So if you want to be able to see or not see things, I'm going to go up to object. Let's go back to our graph type. I'm going to get rid of my values that are going full width across here. I'm going to set those to be, let's set them to be none. <clears throat> Whoops, I turned off the wrong ones. I'll undo it. Graph type. This will be found under my category axis. This is the one I want to turn off to be none from here. So category axis will turn off the axis of vertical lines. Now I can see it and it looks much, much better. So with this, let's place it back in here, grab my scale tool, I'll scale it down so that it fits inside of my paper area. Obviously I've got some problems with the text down here at the very bottom. So I could choose every other month. So let's do March, April, there's May. I can bring these down. I can line these up a little bit better September, uh, let's do October, November, and we'll bring December. And then finally change up the size of those just to make them nice and nice and readable. Hey, let's even select them and let's align those so that they're perfectly done. What I really want to focus on are all the little columns that are created. Instead of keeping the default square columns or rectangular columns that we see, I want to turn those into a graphic that best fits the style and design of my data. Now, this graphic, I'm going to leave it up to you. You can use something existing or you can create your own. But as long as you created it in Adobe Illustrator and it's not a picture like that has pixels, it has to have vector data, this method should work. Now, since this is fire data, I'm going to create like a little simple match stick. So real quickly, we'll go off to the side. I'll make it something that's kind of to scale here. Let's draw off a little rectangle. And we'll give it a little matchstick head. Maybe I'll use a ellipse to draw this. Again, you can find different graphics online, but in my case, I'm just going to make my own graphics. Oh, let's get fancy with it. I'm going to make a little shadow off to the side. Copy. Add a little dark shadow to that side. All right, so with my matchstick, got to have a highlight at the top. Can't go any farther unless I've got something <laughs> up here to, to work with. Okay, so with my little matchstick, <clears throat> we're going to use this and turn this into a column marker that we can work with. I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to group it together. We'll go up to object and group so I can treat it as one solid object. Here's the magic trick. Here's the one thing you need to do whenever you create your own graphic. Choose the line tool and set the line to have no fill and no strokes. So notice that both of those are completely empty. I'm going to draw a horizontal line just underneath the top of this. And notice that this line is going farther than the match stick itself. In other words, it's not some simple sort line. It's got to go really far across the entire thing. With this done, I can select all of my design, including the little line that's here. And we'll go up to object, down to graph, and let's turn this into a saved design. So we'll choose design. So I'll ask you, how do you want to save it? We'll say new. By default, it gives it the name new design. So we're going to rename it. And we'll call this match. Oops. <clears throat> and say OK with that. With this done, we'll say OK. Now I've got this design saved that I can apply to my little columns within this graph. Again, let's choose our group selection tool and click once, twice to select all of the different columns. We can then go up to object, down to graph, and let's change the column design. By default, you can see it's set to none. Now, if I choose match and say, okay, watch what happens. Automatically, they turn into the little matches, but there's still a slight problem. These have been stretched out over the entire area. Now, this may be what you need for your design, but it's not what I want for my design. So with it still selected, let's go up to Object, down to Graph, 
and choose column one more time. <coughs> what we want to do is to change the column type. You can see by default, if we vertically scale it, it's going to stretch it all the way out. If we use sliding, however, the very last one, this is going to pick up on that line that we created. And when we say create, uh, okay, this will automatically change the size of it and slide it up and down based on the little stick that's below it. Now these look very, very small. So I wanna be able to see these nice and large. So let's scale these up a little bit more. If yours are turning out too small, go up to object, down to graph, and let's open up the type one more time. The last thing you can do under these options is change up the column width. And you can see mine set to be at 20%, which is pretty small. If I was to set this at 100%, and say okay. This will scale up the size of my little matchsticks and now I can see those looking much much better as well. By the way there are some other ways you can customize these things by going back to column. If I was to set it to be repeating this will actually repeat my little matchstick for every unit. So if I wanted to one matchstick equals one unit we'll say okay. You can see it will count up the number of matchsticks all the way I have up to here as well. So either way is appropriate for the data that I have, as long as I can quickly and easily read the different parts. I kind of like this particular one. The last thing I need to do is to fix this and to make it look a little bit better. As I've done with the other ones, let's give it a background. So I'm gonna give mine, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine as far as having a rounded background. Uh, let's see, the red is not going to show up too well. Let's go with something lighter. Whoops, excuse me. Let's lock that down. We'll use our selection tool, change up the font, make it bold. And sure, let's give it a different color too so that it shows up naturally. Again, we'll need to pull down each one of our things. So it's April, July, September, and November. Oops, not October, go away October. We want November. Very good. And then once this is done, we can go up to file and we can save this as its own um, custom column chart as well. All right, so that's the basics for how to set up each of these different kinds of charts. I'm only showing you these four different ones. Each one of the different data sets that I'm giving you is gonna function exactly the same way. Your job is to create a custom column chart, or excuse me, a, a custom chart a well-designed chart for each of the different Excel spreadsheets. Once you're finished, save each one of those as an individual document, and you'll upload those to Moodle for this first week. Next week, we're gonna take all of your data and put it into the interactive uh, report and add some animation and some interactive buttons to jump through your report. If you do have any questions or problems, please let me know. Remember, if you turn this in by Wednesday, I should be able to give you some feedback so that you can make corrections and have it finished up by Friday so that we can jump in for next week. All right, I hope you all have a great day and stay safe during this, this bad weather for this week.